the first episode, all I knew what I was going to do was I was just going to hit him with a lot of energy, right? When Bob comes in, <laughs> Bob fans, fans refrigeration. You know, I, I mean, I, I, it's Ryan and and Stanley and and um, Kevin, I believe, yeah. Kevin, uh, Brian's standing there, and that's the Dower Three. <laughs> you know, you can't get any. You know, so I'm like, I'm, these guys are going to know what what hit them. Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. My name is Talal and you're listening to the Popcorn and Soda Podcast, the show where we discuss all things movies, pop culture, and so much more. I want to thank each and every one of you for making me a small part of your day. On today's show, we're joined by a very special guest. He's one of the finest creative artists in the industry today. You know him best as Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration, on the pop culture phenomenon, The Office a character that continuously stole the show every time he was in a scene. On the show today, the very talented Mr. Robert Schaefer. How are you, Robert? Good morning, uh, Talal. Uh, thank you for that introduction. I, I wasn't aware of those facts, but I, I like it. And I'll go with it. <laughs> hey, my pleasure. I, I'll say it anytime. Robert, how have you been over these last 18 months? We're living in such a crazy world, especially being in the creative arts yourself. What did the last 18 months look like for you personally? Well, Talal, I'm semi-retired, uh, mostly retired, and I live in the country on a hill uh, surrounded by nature. So I I'm doing quite well, thank you. Uh, the world is uh, in upheaval, and I pray for it every day. Well, yeah, that's good to hear. I'm, I'm glad that you and your family are doing well. It's been, uh, it's been a crazy time, especially in the arts, something that you've been a part of for your entire career. So before we deep dive into the office, I'm very fascinated by your story. You've had such a consistent career in Hollywood throughout the years. Where does this all begin for you, Robert? What were some of your early influences and what made you want to be in the arts? Well, uh, you know, I didn't discover my love for uh, acting or the arts until I was 23 years old. I was living in Los Angeles, working as a waiter in a French restaurant. I met an actress. I fell in love with the actress. I lived with the actress and she was a famous, beautiful actress. And uh, I went to her sets um, and watched her work. And that's when I decided with her encouragement that I should go to school and learn how to act. And so I did. I went to the best class in Los Angeles with a lady named Peggy Fury, who had come from the actor's studio in New York with Lee Strasberg. Uh, Meg Ryan was in my class, Nick Cage, Sean Penn, Michelle Pfeiffer, on and on and on and on. So I was in a very competitive Stanislavski method acting environment. And we were primarily theater actors concerned with doing playwrights. And so I, I, I had a very good foundation. Uh, I went to that class for a little more than three years uh, every day, and I was known <laughs> as Mr. Scene because I always had a scene up on stage, and I was always working, and I always had multiple partners, and you know I was very aggressive with it because I had come from a competitive basketball background where I just out practiced everybody. You know, I, I, when I get obsessed with something, I, I go 100%. And so I did, and uh, then I got into the uh, grind of being a, you know, a new actor with, you know, really no, <laughs> I mean, I, ha I had the girlfriend, but that doesn't do you any good when you're auditioning and trying to <laughs> parts on your own, you know? So uh, then I started uh, auditioning and I auditioned for everything that I could, you know, even if I knew I wasn't gonna get it, I still made myself do the audition because that was the, that's actually the work. That's, that's what the real job of an actor is, is to audition and to audition correctly. And getting the, the job and doing the filming, that's the icing on the cake, you know, that, that's the good stuff. Uh, that's the reward for all the hard work that you put in, sitting on the freeway and learning lines and having the correct wardrobe and hustling and getting to meet casting directors and writing and producing and doing all the things that you have to do 
when you immerse yourself completely into uh you know the cult of hollywood in hindsight it's really fascinating that you mentioned some of those names that you were in class with could you see the magic with some of those uh great actors that are pop culture phenomenons in their own like nicholas cage someone like that michelle pfeiffer oh, yeah, could you see that? oh yeah of course and that was when they were in their freest most um you know ambitious acting class in uh, with Peggy Fury uh you know was a beautiful thing i mean we sat around her and listened you know there were 50 people who hung on every word that she said because she was so wise and you you know you learned um the basics i mean you, you really learned uh how to um uh, how to be I mean, acting is tricky business. <laughs> you know, I don't like to overanalyze acting uh, or talk too much about it. It's a very personal thing, uh, you know, but look, in this age of cell phones and everybody has cameras, everybody thinks they're an actor. Everybody thinks you just, you know, turn on a camera and stand in front of it and say some lines. That's not how it works at all. You know, some days uh, you might find there's Anthony Hopkins standing across from you. <laughs> so you'd better have some serious game. You know, Steve Carell standing there. Okay, you better you you better be able to hold your shit together. All right. So uh, you better you better uh, you better know what you're doing. So uh, it's it's a fun game. I mean, certainly, but it's also a heartbreaker. Yeah, that's a very common thread that I hear in a lot of my interviews is you can have 100 auditions and 99 may not go your way, but that one yes takes you so far in just your morale and just the overall emotional attachment that a lot of people put into their craft. And as you mentioned, I'm fascinated. What position did you play in basketball? Well, uh, you know, depending on the team that I was on, I mean, I played mostly forward, but also guard and center. I played center in high school. I was six, four and a half. You know, I could jump out of the gym. I mean, I, I weighed 180 pounds, <laughs> you know, so I, I was a high fly act, but uh, I, I really love basketball. I mean, it, I, it's something you could do by yourself for hours, you know, and uh, and, I, and I spent a lot of time uh, on a court bouncing a ball. What was your team growing up? Well, um, when I was a kid, I lived in the D.C. area, so I liked the Washington Bullets, uh, as they were known in those days. And uh, one of their players lived a, a couple houses down from me. And so I used to get to practice with him. And, you know, of course, he whipped me. He <laughs> beat, beat, beat me mercilessly, merc 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 but uh, I, I, you know, learned a lot from playing against, you know, superior talent, which is the same thing in acting. You know, you, you like to I like the nights before I go in where I'm nervous about who I'm going to be working with, you know, where I feel like, OK, Let's go see what this guy's got, or you know, I want to show this guy. Yeah, you know, I like that adrenaline that you get from uh, facing uh, competition. And you know, uh, when you're filming, you're competing. You're competing. Uh, you want the editor to choose your take, so you 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 got to be interesting. You know, I learned that working with Timothy Bottoms. I was a very big Timothy Bottoms fan. You know, I loved The Last Picture Show. That was the movie that really made me aware of filmmaking. Uh, it's a beautiful film. Best winner, uh, best Oscar for, 19, I believe, 71 or 72, somewhere in there. Uh, and uh, so I, I got to do a movie with Timothy Bottoms. And I was playing his, uh, his younger brother. And I was sort of a, <laughs> I was, uh, let's just say challenged, you know. I was uh, uh, playing sort of a goofy, you know, uh, dumb guy. And we were, you know, like uh, Robert. We were bad guys. And, uh, but comical bad guys. And, uh I noticed during one of the um, takes that he did stuff that I hadn't seen before, and he was doing that on his close-up. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, well, that's clever," you know, because he's he's got uh, something new that the editor is going to be sitting there and he's watching all the footage. You know, he's like, "Wait, what's this? <laughs> something new, something interesting." You know, let hey, let's use this take. So that's just a little trick that actors have. You know, that you you uh, you uh, learn. Well, hey, let's take all of that you spoke about and dive into a role that everyone adores. And as I mentioned up top, Bob Vance it is by far one of the most memorable characters on the show, alongside one of the most memorable quotes of the show. So how did you personally get involved at The Office? And what was the original character pitch to you as? Well, I auditioned for it, uh, Talal. I mean, it, it, you know, it's a famous story. I went, it was Halloween, and I didn't even realize it was Halloween 
and I had to drive into Hollywood and you know, there's all this traffic and there's nowhere to park and I'm late. I'm the last guy of the day. And uh, I run in and I'm pouring sweat and it's with Allison Jones, the great Allison Jones. I mean, she cast all Will Ferrell's movies, you know, I was happy just to be in her office, right? And I'd seen a couple of episodes of the show of the first season. So I knew, and it was weird to me. I mean, I'm like, what is this show? And, <laughs> you know, the, the mockumentary style is is unusual at that in 2005. I mean, uh, for television, uh, you know, I, you see it in Christopher Guest films and, you know, it's been done plenty of times. Right. Uh, but so uh, I do it a couple of times for her and she likes it. And then it's OK. See you later. And as I leave, uh, I come out of the office uh, and there's these girls dressed as angels <laughs> and they start screwing around with me and not hit me with their wands and doing all this stuff with their wings. And, you know, I'm like, oh, wow, this is an omen. So I don't hear anything for a couple of weeks. And then they, I get a call back to go to the soundstage out in Van Nuys where, you know, the show is shot. And uh, I go in and Phyllis is there. And, uh, you know, so we go into this dark room <laughs> and they've got me doing some improv, you know, hey, Bob react to Michael. And, you know, I'm like, well, you know, so uh, I do, I do what they want. And I do the scene a few times. And then the next morning I was on the set, I was the first guy up and, you know, I began Bob Bantz the, the very next day. And I like to think Phyllis chose me. I know the director, Charles McDonough, uh, also had a hand in that, but uh, it was a, you know, it, it was meant to be. Is what it you know that's how it always that's what it always comes down to really. <laughs> was it always going to be a series long arc where we have this occurring character, or was it more so as you were portraying this character and how amazing you were portraying this character? They kind of said, "Hey, let's get Bob Vance more and more into the show." Well, you know, I waited fourteen episodes to return, so I, I didn't know. I mean, I told, I remember I told some friends uh, after I'd shot the first episode, I said, hey, I, you know, I shot this show, The Office, um, and, it, you know, I'm the boyfriend of the of a girl who works there, and my office is next door. So I said, I think I might come back. And they were like, yeah, that show's not going to make it. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, I made it back in, and I was in Casino Night, which is a great episode, one of my favorites oh, to this day, written by Steve Carell. His wife's in the episode. You know, it was a, a lot of fun to shoot a casino. It was down in the warehouse is where, where that was. And uh, we had a, a blast doing that episode. But that was when that's when Phyllis and I uh, hit upon, we were sitting at the poker table in between takes. And I said to her, you know, you remember your first love back in uh, junior high school? You, you didn't have eyes for anybody else. I mean, nothing could get between you. And I was like, Let, let's do that. Let's play that. I said, I think that would be a, a good thing because in, in the first episode, all I knew what I was going to do was I was just going to hit him with a lot of energy, right? When Bob comes in, <laughs> Bob Vance, fancy refrigeration. You know, I mean, I, I it's Ryan and and Stanley and and um, Kevin, I believe, yeah, Kevin, uh, Brian's standing there, and that's the dour three. <laughs> You know, you can't get any, you know, so I'm like, I, these guys are going to know what, what hit them. <laughs> so I just came in as hot as I could. So uh, in the second episode, Phyllis and I hit on this thing where, you know, it was just going to be true love. And that's, that's what we, uh, that's what we stumbled on. And uh, that's all I did from there on out. Every scene that Bob's in, it's all about Phyllis. He loves her. He's protecting her. You know, he's a chivalrous guy. Uh, the key for me was in Phyllis's wedding, I learned that Bob had been a Marine in Vietnam. So uh, not just a Marine, a Marine Corps uh, combat infantry officer. <laughs> so that's a special guy. That's a different guy. You know, those oh, guys yeah. that, that, that survived that, that, that's life and death stuff, you know. And so Michael Scott uh, can't really affect. Bob Vance. I mean, first of all, I'm six foot five, <laughs> 230 pounds. So, you know, it, you got your hands full there. And uh, people used to say to me all the time, why doesn't Bob just beat Michael up? And I'm like, okay, first of all, <laughs> it's not funny. And secondly, what happens after that? You know, I yeah, mean, it, there's nowhere to go. I want to be in more episodes, not less. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, one of the great things about this ensemble piece is the brilliant writers and the producers is that they give everyone a moment to shine. And Bob is a great example of that, where you had that amazing introduction. And as you were talking about 
the Bob Vance line to Stanley to Ryan and to Kevin and then you hear Ryan say so Bob what line of work are you in this is hilarious and specifically what I loved about that scene is you said Bob Vance Vance in three different like deliveries they were all th they weren't the same Bob Vance Bob Vance Bob Vance they had a personality to it so as an actor did you kind of bring that flair into the scene itself or was that kind of written that way well it's not written that way <laughs> you know it it it, it, there's just Bob Vance enters, you know, I mean, so that, it, the life of it's uh, mine, you know, I mean, obviously it's a collaborative medium and, you know, the director has some input, the writer has some input, the producer has some input, everybody's got some input, but it's still me that, um, you know, makes that happen. Well, let's circle back to that conversation we're just having about the writing episode, which is quite possibly one of the best episodes of the entire series. At this point, Steve Corral is absolutely crushing it as Michael Scott. What do you remember the most about shooting that episode, and especially what St Steve brought to it? Well, that episode was filmed five minutes from my uh, from my house, <laughs> so that was that was handy. You know, I drive past that church every single day, so I love the location. Um, well, Steve got hurt when we were shooting that. Uh, when I throw him out of the wedding, uh, there's these big, heavy red curtains there and then three steps down. And so uh, on the way through, you know, through the curtains and down the stairs, he rolled his ankle and he fell on the floor. He was screaming. Uh, and I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, and, you know, there, I opened the curtains and I screamed, help. <laughs> and there's, you know, 200 people there and here come all the producers rushing. And I mean, Steve's laying there holding his ankle. He had heard it already during Evan Almighty and then hadn't healed completely. And so for the rest of the episode, he was playing hurt. He could barely walk. And uh, the one scene that was really tough for him was the one where he's outside the window and he's on a trampoline there and he's bouncing up and down and trying to look in the window. And so every time he did that, I mean, he was really, it was excruciating pain, but he did it. Um, the thing I remember most about the episode, uh, well, there's two other things. Um, we uh, there's an outtake uh, from that episode where uh, Phil, uh, there's a fart in Phyllis's dressing room <laughs> and Michael accuses Phyllis of farting and Phyllis accuses Michael of farting. And so every time we tried to shoot that, uh, Steve would come apart every time he said the word pun pungent because the line was, it's, oh, it's, it's so pungent. <laughs> And he would fall apart. He, he couldn't say it. He was cracking up every time. So uh, the producers and directors and, you know, everybody's uh, at Video Village and it's one floor down. But I can hear them all snickering and laughing and they can't hold it together because he's laughing. But I'm standing at the door and I'm like, Steve Carell's getting ready to open that door. <laughs> so be ready. Be ready because you don't know what he's going to do. And that's the fun thing about working with a guy like that. You know, uh, same thing when I worked with... Um, I'm, oh, what's his name? Uh, Between two ferns, Zach. Zach uh, Nakis, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're unpredictable. You know, I mean, you don't really. It's never the same. So, uh, you know, a lot of actors, it's the same every single time they say the line, but uh, you never know exactly what you're going to get from uh, from those guys. Uh, being someone in the trenches himself, who's in the actual scenes. So, take out the directors, the cinematographers, uh, the lighting. Is it difficult to not hold back your laughter? You guys are professionals. We all know that. But at times when you have such comedic geniuses on the show, did you ever have to find it like you're like biting your tongue a little? Well, uh, no, not really. I mean, my job is not to laugh. I mean, <laughs> the, we're, we're trying to make you laugh. You know, we're uh, sure there's times. I mean, uh, you know, people always ask about how much improv there was. And, you know, they would do something uh to try to make each other laugh, you know, at, at the, in the middle of the long day of filming, there's some, there's funny stuff that happens, you know, uh, and since it's video, you, 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 it's not as bad as blowing a film take. I mean, if you're working on a low budget film, you can't really afford to blow takes, you know, you, right. you same. And, and so most of the actors on uh, the office didn't blow takes. I mean, you don't want to be the one that, that they, that they cut for, you know, you want to be the one that keeps the thing going. Because we did a lot of long takes. I mean, we weren't cutting all the time. And we, that's the whole point of the mockumentary. You know, it's the camera sees 360. So you got to live in the moment. And, and you can't be <laughs> laughing. I mean, I mean, he's funny. You know, he's a funny guy. I mean, after the somebody would yell cut, everybody would start laughing. You know, uh, that happened a lot. 
I mean, but yeah. but during it, no, 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 discipline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, that's what I like to hear, Bob. So, in your words, what would you say is the legacy of the character of Bob Vance in this larger ensemble of cast? Well, again, it gets, it's just love. You know, he, he, he loves Phyllis. I mean, it's that's the true love on the show. I mean, and the, the irony of it is that, you know, they're the middle-aged, dour, you know, dowdy couple, and they're not the young jet-set uh, lovebirds, but they're the ones that have what everybody else wants and is trying to find, right? So that's the thing I think that women respond to, certainly, uh, is that the way Bob takes care of Phyllis. So that's probably what appeals to most people. You know, he's just a, a pretty solid guy. I mean, the writers did some stuff to make him weird as time went on. You know, <laughs> they got a little creepier. Uh, you know, who knows what would have happened the longer they'd gone. I mean, they intimated that, you know, he, he did some funny, funny business with the grand jury. And is he in the mob? And did he sleep with his secretary? And did he kill a kid in Africa? you know, and think it was a soccer ball. <laughs> and he beat people <laughs> up at bars for looking at Phyllis's cleavage. And, you know, so I would, uh, I had never taken a drink as the character. You know, I always was abstaining, you know, and then all of a sudden I was drunk in Africa. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the writers, they take liberties. And so you have to incorporate that. I mean, I remember reading the scene where Phyllis and Bob, uh, on the Valentine's Day episode, they go into the bathroom and have sex. I was like, oh, what is this? <laughs> but of course, you know, I did it. I mean, it, I mean, I, was, I had to embrace it. I was like, okay, let's let's do it. And actually, it was a very funny moment when Phyllis and I were in the bathroom by ourselves and with the sound guy, and uh, and it's dark, and they everybody's out in the hallway, and they're all going, okay, Bob, uh, make some noise. <laughs> So we were we did a minute at least of noise. And I said to Phyllis right before we shot it, I was like, you know, they're only gonna use five or ten seconds of this. <laughs> so they're out there making us go through this just because it's cracking them up. Because <laughs> we're both in there moaning and making sex noise. And I was like, eh, this is gonna be so quick, they're not even gonna <laughs> But they made us uh, they made us go uh, a long take there. <laughs> It's interesting, Robert. We're getting to a point where the show has been off the air longer than it was even on the air. There's a whole new generation of people that are discovering the show for the very first time, largely through streaming. I'm one of them. I knew about the show, but I didn't really watch it. And then when I got into it, it's like, oh, where have I been for the last five years? It's been reported this is the most watched show during the pandemic. How often do you get people coming up to you saying they just watched The Office for the very first time? Well, uh... I don't get the very first time too much anymore. I mean, usually I get, I binge watched it 10 times. <laughs> yeah, know. that's another. Uh, most of my interaction is on cameo.com. You know, I do videos for the fans. Brian Bob Gortner is the leading earner on cameo.com, actually. Uh, I think there's like seven of us on there from the show. Uh, Leslie David Baker and Melora Harden and Kate Flannery. And uh, so, you know, uh, the notes that we get from the fans uh, where they're giving us the direction, uh, usually they say, this is, I'm the, the, the biggest fan. <laughs> I mean, there's so many number one fans, it's hard to believe. <laughs> well, hey, when you have a show this big and NBC yeah. having its own streaming service now, you know the audience in the studio, they're clamoring for a reboot or a relaunch of the show. What are your thoughts about that? And is that something you'd be interested in revisiting? Oh, oh, sure. I mean, who else? I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't want anybody else to play Bob Vance. Uh, you know, it would be very difficult to do it uh, because of the time. I mean, everybody's aged uh, 10 years now. Or it's nine years, right? So uh, that's that's tough. And then, you know, Steve's film career. And I mean, there's a lot of ball juggling and there's some bad feelings. I'm, you know, Steve is no, in no big hurry to come back to NBC. They didn't even offer him a contract after year seven, okay? So, there's a, you know, they'd really have to back the Brinks truck up to make that happen. And uh, I know they, they really like it. Uh, and Greg Daniels has said he's figured out a way to do it, uh, you know, where there would be like found episodes from that same era that we were shooting in. Uh, we'll see, I mean, logistically, it's, it'd be very, very hard to do. 
But I know the, the core cast would, John Krasinski's already said he'd do it. I mean, he's got a biggest film career as uh, Steve yeah. does. Mm -hmm. and do, you think you can, do you think you can do a reboot without Steve? Or is it just not going to be the same without him? No, oh, you need him. I mean, the show really suffered when he wasn't there. In my estimation, as season eight and nine were, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other conversation for a whole other day, right? <laughs> you know, we all have our opinions. <laughs> when was the last time you watched the show yourself? And do you find yourself revisiting it from time to time? Every now and then when I'm flipping through the channel, you know, it's on the uh, uh, comedy channel uh, on TV. Uh, I, I don't stream it. I mean, I mean, uh, I don't, you know, I don't sit around and watch myself uh, very often. <laughs> you know, I, I'm uh, I'm getting ready to uh, do an interview for Psycho Cop, which was my first big film, and uh, so they're they're doing a Blu-ray release of it finally, and so uh, they're doing an interview for it. And I hadn't seen I haven't seen it in years, <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I guess I'll, I better watch it before I talk about it. Well, that's interesting because, um, as you mentioned earlier in the interview, is acting is a very personal thing to you. So when you're rewatching things from ages ago, how do you feel about that personally? Is it? I know it's a common thing where a lot of actors don't want to watch themselves because they find that you know it's maybe too cringy or maybe it's such of a personal medium that they don't want to revisit the past. How did you personally find that? Well, I saw Phyllis's Wedding a couple of years ago, and I just thought, that what a beautiful episode that is. I mean, wow, there's so much going on in it, and the music and everything about it was just perfect. Even Uncle Al, <laughs> poor Uncle oh. Al. <laughs> Heartbreaking <laughs> stuff. Rain, Rain Wilson. Dwight Schrute. Another classic on the show, and that's, hey, if they do do a reboot or a relaunch or whatever they want to do with this show, you need to have that, those core pieces in place. Oh, now, of course. Of course. Absolutely. So what, in your opinion, what makes the show connect with audiences on a larger scale? Well, I, I think they they all seem like real people, you know, with even at the height of absurd comedy. And so that's the trick, right? I always said when we were shooting the film, you know, we're making a comedy, but people are interested in the soap opera of it. So, you know, there's there's a lot of real emotion behind the absurdity. And so that's really what a farceur is at the peak of their game when the, you know, when the writing and the acting come together like they did, as well as, you know, the uh, handheld camera was certainly made it way more immediate. Right. Uh, it tears down the fourth wall. So you're, you're speaking, Pam's talking directly to you and she's yearning for Jim. You know, uh, Jim's, you know, his heart's right there, you know, talking about Pam. I mean, those those are real emotions. So that's why people connect. I agree with that 100%, Robert, especially because a lot of people that do work in offices, they, in their mind, they come up with these preconceived notions. All right, this is the Jim, this is the Pam. And it's, it's, it's a very common thing. It's a very common thing. What do we got there? My advanced refrigeration tumbler. Ah, there we go. And you see the nice little sign behind you there as well, Vance Refrigeration. Bam. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the, uh, this is the Cameo studio here that we're sitting in right now. All ah, right, right on. And see, again, that's why people love connecting with you guys, especially through a platform like Cameo, is because they see a lot of your guys' self in their everyday lives. There is a different version of Bob that I come across. There's a version of Dwight, Steve Carell's character, everyone. Like, it's just a very relatable show, and I think that's one thing that really draws everyone to it is because you know a Jim. You know a Pam. Right. Sadly, you know a Ryan as well. It's one of those things. <laughs> yeah, it's the Michael Scott you got to watch out for. <laughs> uh, I think we all have a Michael Scott or two in our lives as well. So, Bob, I know you mentioned that uh, you're now semi-retired. Looking back at your career, what, what are you most proud of? What's something that you really believe that – if you hadn't taken certain steps, you wouldn't have gotten to Bob Vance or whatnot. So I'm curious to hear what your thoughts on that are. Well, listen, it's, you know, about being uh, prepared when the moment, when the opportunity ar arises. I mean, early in my career, you know, I would go out and party with my friends the night before a big audition and not really give it the, the, the work and the preparation that it, that it needed. And so the next morning you'd go in, you'd do, you know, half, 
half-assed job and not get the part and then just on to the next one but as time went on you know i learned how important everyone was and just competed you know i, I felt always felt like you know that i should have gotten every part that i auditioned for <laughs> because i worked that's how hard i worked on you know uh, trying to get them so i'm proud of being uh you know when i set out to do this <clears throat> my goal was uh to never have anybody uh, bad mouth me after I walked off a set. I wanted everybody to go, my God, what a pro that guy is. And so that's that's what I ended up with. I, I don't think you could find anybody in Hollywood who would uh, say bad things about me because I always gave 100% effort every single time, even if I hated it. <laughs> even if I didn't really like the people I was working with, I still, you know, uh, took responsibility for for the for the role and for for the job itself. I mean, that's the that's the true test and uh just lucky i was lucky fortunate to you know work hard and and get lucky what do you miss the most about being on set uh not so much of being on set i, I mean i like the uh i like the loss of self that you get when you're really in uh, playing a part uh you mm -hmm. know where you come out of it and you're like whoa what just happened <laughs> not even sure I'm not sure what I did. And that's when you're really, you know, really doing it. So uh, when you're able to watch yourself and, you know, uh, when you're standing outside of yourself, watching yourself and you're not really in there. Uh, but it depends on the role. I mean, some roles require more of that than others. I mean, uh, certainly uh, with Bob Vance, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, and that was the height of concentration. I mean, uh, because everyone else was so good. Uh, that you had to you had to be on your game at all times. That's wonderful. As we wrap up, the great Robert Schaefer, it's now time for a segment I call the final act. Robert, I'm gonna ask you ten rapid fire questions about your okay. likes, your dislikes. You just want the first thing that comes to your mind. But here's the catch. I'm gonna give you one minute to try to get through as many of them as you can. You up for it? Right. Sure. Movies or TV shows? Movies. Theater or watch at home? Theater. Favorite movie? <laughs> Tender Mercies. Favorite TV show? The Office. Favorite trilogy? I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> Does pineapple belong on pizza? Sure. Favorite character from The Office not named Bob Vance? Phyllis Vance. <laughs> Describe The Office in one word. Who? Who's going to win the NBA championship this year? Milwaukee. Bam. Robert, we got through the man. That's well done. We beat the one minute clock there. You're really good at that. And you know what? Being a Toronto Raptors fan myself, being in Toronto, I certainly hope that's not the case. And I hope that. We somewhat make a comeback, but that's awesome. Robert, <laughs> thank you so much for being a guest on the show today. And thank you for your contributions to the creative arts. The Office is one of my all-time favorite shows, and you play a big part in creating that love and magic of the show. I truly thank wish you. you all the best, and I look forward to having you back on the show to discuss The Office reboot. <laughs> I like popcorn and soda. <laughs>